The Secrets of Star Wars is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. Hello there. Obi-Wan Kenobi here, also known as James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan. Jedi Master Pro Koon. And many other characters in the world of Star Wars. You're listening to... Shh, don't tell. It's the secrets of Star Wars. May the Force be with you. You're listening to the Secrets of Star Wars, episode 128. Hello there. It's a power that Jedi have that lets them control people and make things float. Impressive. Every word in that sense was wrong. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I find your lack of faith disturbing. It's against my programming to impersonate a dead. That's not how the Force works. Force is with me, and I am with the Force, and I fear nothing. Remember, the Force will be with you, always. Hey everyone, I'm Angela Ciolana, aka The Bendu, and you're listening to The Secrets of Star Wars, where we talk about everything connected to that galaxy far, far away, including the deeper themes and meanings. Well, it's back to school time where we are. And in the spirit of that, we are looking at the teachers and students of Star Wars. What can we learn for our own lives from that galaxy far, far away? And so joining the conversation today is someone who knows quite a bit about that world. uh, The old Ben of our show, Mike Creevy. Hello, Mike. Hey, Angela. How's it going? It's going great. I'm really excited to talk with an actual teacher <laughs> about this subject. <laughs> well, I hope I, I don't want to. Uh, I was going to joke with some sort of Top Gun reference about you know, like you know, where I finished in my class or something, but I couldn't think of anything that quite fit the Star Wars universe. <laughs> Just to level set expectations. So, <laughs> oh, I'm sure there will be many jokes. Um, <laughs> but for maybe those who are new to the show, could you sort of give people a refresher of like your teacher situation (laughs) yeah um so teach it's funny there was as far back as i can remember some sort of teaching or training component with like every job i've had (laughs) so i don't really know when it when it started i never really saw myself seriously i mean maybe like in high school or like once once i was really starting to think about possible career paths and stuff um I wouldn't, I don't think I would have like, if you told me about like that, I would be potentially teaching someday. I don't think that would have been shocking to me or completely like unimaginable. Um, I've known since I was like at least four or five that I could never be a physician. I don't Mm -hmm. know. I just like, you know, I just knew that like (laughs) since I was a kid teaching, eh, you know, I was like, I never really seriously planned on it, but, um, uh, you know, I had it, it really came up a lot in the army actually. And, um, you know, different sort of, uh, training sessions and training blocks and just, you know, we're like, Hey, cause you know, a lot of times it's like the needs of your unit. So they're like, we need an anti-terrorism expert. Creevy, um, you're not busy. Uh, you're going to like, we're going to fly you across the country for like a, you know, four day course. And then you have to be like <laughs> our counterterrorism expert. I'm like, Hmm. I feel like it should take a little more training than that. (laughs) Um, So sometimes it would just be something like, you know, not so super serious or like that one that is serious, you know. So, um, but um, then I was doing a lot of youth ministry work after I was starting to get out of the army. And then there naturally came with that uh, a catechetical component. And to make a long story short, uh, I've now been teaching uh, high school theology, all four grade levels, mostly ninth grade. Uh, for the last, this is my ninth year doing that in some capacity. So, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from, <laughs> pretty wide from, variety in the sense of, of yeah, age ranges from and many stuff too. Many different worlds, right? Yeah. <laughs> and subject matter, but mostly theology now. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and it, for me, like I'm not a teacher, but in my capacity in my job, I am in charge of the mentorship program that we run some some years when we have the openings. Um, and also, yeah, just I spent many years like i think 15 years of my life doing catechism teaching also Mm -hmm. um so Mm -hmm. yeah i think just from from those experiences um i'll also get to share a little bit um but i'm I'm really curious to hear also what the audience will say about kind of what we're discussing today um well if i can add just real quick i i totally didn't even think i I randomly i always grab 
Sometimes I'm, it's in the dark even, but I randomly grab a Star Wars themed t-shirt, sort of my tradition to wear when we're recording. So uh, we're not putting this video out, but I just realized it's hilarious that I happened to pick the one of the Stormtrooper writing in punishment right on the board. Those were the droids we were looking for. You know, they have the, <laughs> the picture of a 3PO and R2 pasted or like taped up right on the board. So it even has an educational sort of a, a aspect on my t-shirt today. <laughs> Didn't plan that. <laughs> you were subconsciously thinking about it already. <laughs> well, before we get into this and talk about like why education and teaching and learning is like fundamental to Star Wars, um, I wanted to talk about George Lucas a little bit because, mm -hmm. you know, the maker, the brain, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what I found out was that George actually has an educational foundation um, that headquarters at Skywalker Ranch. Mm. And, um, it supports projects in like public and private schools, um, to try to support, you know, um, really effective modes of, of education and learning. And so, um, I found out that George actually has really strong opinions about, about teaching and about education. Um, so I was reading some interviews and there was this one interview with, um, big issue.com. Hmm. And George was answering a question about heroes, which I know we'll kind of tease at the up. end of the show. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, but afterwards, the interview was like, you sound like a teacher. <laughs> and George <laughs> actually responded, I see myself as a teacher. And he said that one hmm. of his friends calls him Yoda in a flannel shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can um, see that. Oh yeah. My goodness. Yeah. And then. Huh. And then there was, I mean, a lot of us Star Wars fans have watched the Bill Moyers interview with George Lucas, and I revisited that, um, and I'd like to kind of get your reflection on this, Mike, as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So so George said, I have a philosophy that we all teach, and we all teach every day of our lives, and it's not necessarily what we lecture. I've discovered kids don't like lectures at all, but... It is really the way that we live our lives and what we do with our lives, the way we conduct ourselves. And once in a while, they listen to the lectures. So when I make films, I'm very aware of the fact that I'm teaching on a much larger scale than I would just as parents or somebody walking through life because I have this megaphone. And then he went on to talk about how people in media, you know, have that megaphone. And so how what they say, what they do, how they conduct themselves and what they produce has a teaching influence on everyone. So hmm. I was interested in like, you know, when you hear those words coming from George Lucas, what your reflection is on his words, but also if you can find any connection to what he's saying um, to Star Wars. <laughs> I know I'm putting on oh, the spot. Wow. But. <laughs> no, not just that, because this is so funny, and I'm so glad we didn't talk about this ahead of time, because I just had uh -huh. to type here to make sure I was getting the reference right. Uh, so I don't, I didn't have this memorized myself, but the moment you said that, I just started kind of chuckling a little bit, because I was like, that sounds an awful lot like this Pope Paul the Sixth quote. Yep, I knew exactly so, what yeah, you were talking so, about. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I think he might be, you know, maybe he's stealing a little. No, but he's certainly in line with us. Uh, so it's um, Evangelii Nunziandi, 1975, um, which was, I think it was, um, oh, December 8th. Yeah, so um, uh, Immaculate Conception, too. So there's all kinds of Catholic connections. But the famous quote, of, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have heard, modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers. And if he does listen to teachers, it is because they are witnesses. And so some different vocabulary there, but I think it's the same idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, you know, like I was just telling my students this because we we're starting a new year. And, um, you know, certainly in our setting, I was kind of giving them the, <laughs> so I, I describe it sometimes as this like, um, like after school special, like in the ABC kind of like dad, you know, kind of thing. With like, you know, like I almost want to put on like acoustic guitar music and I just like sit down <laughs> on the stool and I'm like, listen, son, you know, it's, it's one of those. But, but there's this like, um, for me, and this is something I think we're going to get into later, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, I think he's right on. And I think what's, what's so amazing is that it's, God seems to know how to, you know, set the, <laughs> to set the board, so to speak, or, or to kind of put us in the, 
uh, environments where we can learn differently from different people and sometimes learn, you know, sometimes you have someone who's trying to teach you, I think we've all experienced this, someone's trying to teach you a lesson that, you know, really you look back on it, you know, you needed to know it mm. and you needed to learn it and, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully you gain the humility to recognize that. And with me, especially working with teenagers, I, I feel like I see this sometimes, like they'll come back like a few years later and you could just see that something finally sank in. And it's yeah. like, maybe you were like pulling your hair out because you saw this need, you were trying to reach them. It wasn't just about a lecture, but you know, like you'd slip it even into your lectures a little bit, or like you'd, you'd try to address this particular theme or this particular, you know, lesson that you really wanted this kid or these kids to get. And they just, they just wouldn't, they just mm -hmm. didn't want it. They weren't interested. And you get so frustrated and anyone listening to this who's a teacher, you know, you know how really like frustrating and, and sometimes just uh, depressing that can feel. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times teachers put more weight on their shoulders than even should be there. Or, or, you know, you try to take it all on yourself. And then the fact is there might be somebody else who's going to get that message across to this person. Yeah. In the most completely unlikely way, you know? Exactly. And so I think with Star Wars, like, I, I, I want to kind of think about it more as we go through. And I have a couple mm -hmm. notes here, but, you know, just, just off the top of my head, it, you know, it's interesting that, you know, you, you have Kanan, for, for example, in Rebels, right? Like mm -hmm. trying so hard to like teach Ezra and he does and, and that that relationship develops but you know and I would almost argue in a sense Ezra's learning how to be a Jedi from Kanan he's learning how to be a Jedi from Sabine mm -hmm. from Mara you know like mm -hmm. it's this totality of of the relationships his, right and and, mm -hmm. and I have some notes on on some of those things that I'm sure we'll get into mm -hmm. a little bit more later as far as why I think that is or what's really yeah. going on there but no I think that's I think Lucas is dead on there that if it's it's not just something that you can, you know, copy and paste into somebody else's head or you can mm. put it in their head and they can regurgitate it on a test, but it doesn't mean anything, you know. Yeah. And any of us who teach the faith, I'm sure you've seen this too. Like I, I know people who can rattle off the lists, you know, better than me, you know, like they've got the precepts of the church and the Ten Commandments and the, you know, uh, the, um, uh, works of mercy like they could rattle off all the lists but they don't believe any of it mm -hmm. it doesn't make any difference in yeah. their in their life and it's not bad that they know it um but the knowledge is only part of it right and so that's yeah i'm, I'm rambling now but yeah there's there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot here and i I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. i didn't know any of this about lucas as far as his real specific teaching interest that's really kind of cool yeah um and you know, when I read that quote from George, that I exactly thought of that same Pope Paul VI quote. So that's really funny. Um, but as far as applying this to Star Wars, I think I see that that concept ringing true with, um, you know, you ha we have Darth Tyrannus, Count Dooku, mm. who was the Padawan of Yoda. And we also have Luke Skywalker, who was the Padawan of Yoda, right? Right. Like, Two people who, like, theoretically probably both heard similar lessons coming from the mouth of Yoda. Mm. Um, so why did they turn out differently? Well, I think one could argue that it was because, and you, if you look up the kind of the backstory of Count Dooku, you see that um, he saw how the Jedi lived and what they said. And he saw the corruption already happening within the Jedi. And so he turned to the dark side. So mm -hmm. he was seeing the, how they were living their lives. And that was saying to him, nope, like that was teaching him the lesson of these Jedi don't know what they're talking about. And probably he saw the power of the dark side, um, the people that, you know, um, that he, that, kind of approached him or whatever. Um, but, you know, you can look at Luke and you can say in the current canon that something similar happened to Luke also later on <laughs> in his life. Um, but he just kind of quit. Yeah. You know, like he yeah. didn't, he's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think we'll talk about that more because that kind of mm -hmm. relates to one of my, my favorite examples of teaching and learning in Star mm -hmm. Wars. But um you know, like Star Wars is known for these proverbial sayings, right? Like, yes. may the force be with you, do or do not, there is no try. 
train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got stuff in in new canon as well. We are what they grow beyond. Yes. I, like, That's like my, <laughs> I quote yeah. a lot. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like proverbial sayings are in themselves teaching tools, mm-hmm. but like nobody cares about your proverbial sayings if your life speaks the opposite. Like, especially, right. you know, they may write off your proverb altogether, even if it's really good advice, like even if it's really wisdom that you're speaking, Hmm. but you're living in an opposite way, then, right. You know, I think that's something too, that I, I I forget who I heard say this. It's one of the, the, I hate it. not Catholic guru. That's not the right vote. It's one of those, one of those people that, that, you know, most of us probably love and read all the time. I just can't remember mm-hmm. which one it is, but they were pointing out, I thought, a really good distinction I heard years ago about um, hypocrisy. Because, you know, you run into that a lot with the, you know, the teenagers will, will yeah. you know, it's a bunch of hypocrites. And it's like, yeah, I get that. But, but there's, I, I was really running into this, like, how do you con- confront that? Because there's something missing from that. And I couldn't quite figure it out. And this person made a good point that it's, you know, hypocrisy is not that you are, well, so how do I put it this way? Someone who is a hypocrite is someone who is, you know, sort of willingly going against mm. what they, what they purport to hold, to hold to, or, or, you know, so like my, if I'm teaching my students that, you know, it's, um, you know, immoral to sell weapons on the black market i'm not doing this mm-hmm. by the way and then i go home <laughs> and i'm you. doing that you know and i'm just flat yeah. out completely like saying one thing and doing another you know mm-hmm. that's that's definitely hypocrisy but you know the, the distinction between someone who's struggling you know so especially when we're teaching the importance of learning from our sins and i mean i, I have plenty of sins i struggle with i teach mm-hmm. my students all the time that those sins i struggle with which i don't tell them about are sinful, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's not that I'm a hypocrite. It's that I, I know that, you know, I'm, I'm fighting, right. I'm fighting that fight. And so I think that there's a, there's a good sort of, and it's tricky to tell, I think sometimes, and I think we see this in Star Wars too, to see these characters that we know and love, not as impeccable. Mm-hmm. Yoda's probably the hardest to not see that way for me, <laughs> at least in the original, you know, then they try like in the prequels, you see these, you know, he's off on yeah. some stuff, but like, I think even with someone like, you know, um, even with someone like, you know, certainly Qui-Gon or Mm Obi-Wan or like, you know, any of those relationships in the, um, like the animated series and stuff like that, you know, like, I I think you get a good taste of that. Like, here's someone who's like, they're not perfect, you know, Mm -hmm. and they've got plenty of struggles. Obi-Wan comes to mind to me a lot because he's, I like that scene in, is it episode two where he's kind of expressing some of his frustration with with young anakin and uh he says you know his powers have made him arrogant and yoda has that quip about like yeah you know something we're seeing even in some older seasoned guys (laughs) (laughs) okay you know but that idea of of um you know trying to make sure that you know you are not like i said earlier too even the, the teacher pressure like i have to be perfect no um but be, be real, be authentic, you know, mm. and, and this is like you said earlier about like something we'll tease as far as maybe future topic, um, <laughs> it ties into that too, a little bit with the idea of not being, I think it's just a good exercise of, of leadership, yep. which, you know, and everyone always points out education comes from this Latin, the, the, the etymological root of, of leading, right. Or leading out mm-hmm. and, and, and helping to flourish and bloom and all these kinds of images you can use. And, I think if you have a willing student who is, you know, at least somewhat honest, you know, mm-hmm. at least interested in, in, in growing and developing, um, or even on a sports team, right? You know, if you have, have athletes who see that their coach is willing to do what he's asking or she's asking them to do, right? you know, and not just like constantly doing Call nothing but shots. barking orders and, you yeah. know, sitting, sitting back and, you know, that's, that's always that tension, you know, of you're going to say one thing, but do another, or you're going to make me do all this stuff, but you're not willing to, to do it. Or you say you want a dialogue, but then all you do is lecture. And that, yeah, it's, it's, right. it's a difficult path. Yeah. Well, and it's no secret that 
the master and apprentice relationship is like very central to Star Wars. <laughs> it's yeah. like it it's already got that learning relationship at the core of it. And so we get all of these examples of people being mentors or leaders and people being the the students or those that are being led. Um and I wanted to bring that up too because mm. um I just thought it was interesting, you know, where does that come from? Um, and, you know, we know from our different discussions and things like that, that Star Wars was very influenced by Japanese cultural heritage, um, especially mm-hmm. because of the films of Akira Kurosawa um, that we've talked about on so many of our episodes. Right. And so in the Japanese culture, relationships are hierarchical. And this comes from the Confucian teachings about having respect for the wisdom of your elders. And so there, there are terms that are used. Um, not sure if I'm going to pronounce them right, but senpai and koai, which means basically mentor and protege. And so whether you're in the educational field or like any other facet of society, you'll hear uh, these terms being used, senpai and koai. And basically it's just in that culture, it's very important for it to be established. Like when you meet somebody, you have to know what their experience is in the right. field that you're in, the context that you're in, so that you know whether you are the learner or you're the mentor. <laughs> so I thought that right. was really, really fascinating. Like the idea of um, just taking that cultural, you know, a, a characteristic and sure. putting it in this fantasy space, (laughs) you know, um, story that, you know, all the cultures can really relate to. (laughs) Oh no. And and my, wow. That's like, there's so much there. And I was just thinking, you know, it's, it's interesting. The, I think there's a real danger now and then, you know, not to go off into this, but, but just to, just to state it, sure. like, I think, you know, there is such an impulse, of, like across our culture in so many places, in so many ways to just have this knee jerk disrespect and rejection of, of like mm. anything that came before, you know, mm-hmm. like this complete, you know, in some extreme cases, you know, I mean, it's one thing to get mad at your parents or one, you're mad at society or mad at certainly like an injustice that's there that needs to be undone, but another right. to sort of like reject authority per se or you know Mm. paternity or maternity per se and the danger of that and of course you know i mean you can go to the other extreme you know you can uh over inflate it you can have a very you know uh, uh, abusive of course you know society or certainly you know uh, just i mean households or neighborhoods and those sorts of things of Mm -hmm. course that happens Mm -hmm. um once is one too many you know (laughs) and it happens all over the world but i do think we lose something obviously when we just have that you know just me you Mm -hmm. know and just always new and always fresh because you've like you have nothing to you like if if you don't know where you came from Mm -hmm. you know you just you lose so much and what's so neat to me is you see in star wars that's just there you know and and you see it you you see the abuses of it but you also see the importance of and this kind of unapologetic right recognition of like okay we might need to work out the details of how we're going to do this but not whether we're going to do it there needs Mm. to be some kind of right of of passage of passing the torch and 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 i really like that you know um Mm -hmm. and i think it's uh i even like i don't know if this is a good example of it but i feel a tiny taste of that myself already i feel so old angela I, <laughs> you, so my my daughter is starting kindergarten um oh, wow in two days but that's not why i feel old because that's still she's kind of small mm-hmm. um one of the so she's starting kindergarten one of the teachers at her her little catholic school who's uh the first grade teacher who's been there for a couple of years now was one of my peer ministers <laughs> like when she was a junior in high school oh like 12 years ago yeah and i'm like oh my gosh like (laughs) you know like i instantly it's like i imagine myself wearing a yoda robe and like holding a staff you know just being (laughs) like you know but there is this bizarre like experience of like i you know i have no idea what role and you know you don't want to 
it's it could be easy for some maybe more than others uh, i don't usually struggle with this myself but to let that become like this right. power trip thing or something or over inflate mm-hmm. in your head but it's like truly the humility of like i it's crazy that you know in god's plan i he like he wanted me to have some thing to do with that mm. you know with her development um and it it you know it might have even if she doesn't know it you know even like it might have been something i said or did that helped that yeah you, know? you get to see the fruit of your work and your it, it should make you take it seriously too right like you know because by the same token maybe there's someone who should have been a teacher Mm. who I said something where I was just a little off a particular semester or something. And it just was just enough to make that. Oh, that guy's kind of a jerk. Like he's really like grumpy or, <laughs> or just like, he doesn't like me. So like, again, like you can't, you'll go absolutely out of your mind if you let, yeah, if you let yourself think that you can really control that. But I just think mm-hmm. it's back to the importance of, you know, recognizing that there, there is this opportunity for this mentoring. Yeah. Um, and it's so easy to like the, the kid, you know, comes to you and they want to meet with you about something or, hey, can you write me a recommendation or can you do this? And, you're, and like you have a million things to do, mm-hmm. but maybe you need to put that thing you're doing or that lesson plan down for a second and talk to this person. Right. Like, did anyone ever just sit Anakin down and just be like, what's going on with you, man? You know, and I thought that was, especially with Mace Windu, like Mace Windu is just I love him, but he's just like. He doesn't ever attempt to hide how much he doesn't trust Anakin (laughs) and how much everything with Anakin, anything to do with Anakin. I I would love to go back and watch every scene with them because (laughs) in my memory, it's like every single scene they have together, at least in the movies, you know, the shows Mm -hmm. expand a little. It's like Mace would rather be somewhere else. Yeah. You know, (laughs) it's like it's an interruption to his incredibly important time. Mm -hmm. And that has a role to play. In his own demise, yes. you know, like he That's gets so his true. arm cut off and is killed, so far as we know, um, because of something to do with even his own decision. So, yeah, that's it's crazy how it's all connected. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. And and kind of bringing it back to the idea of the the master and the apprentice. When I was reading in the interviews with George, I also learned that he kind of espouses these two ideal situations, um, learning situations or models. Hmm. The first is the philosophical model from like the Greek philosophers where Mm -hmm. like, uh, like Socrates or Plato has a small group that he just engages in discussion with. And that is how they learn, like through asking questions and just, you know, kind of bringing those things out Uh, in the small group amongst the students. And the other one was the model of the shoe cobbler, which I thought was really interesting. And the way that he put it was that a shoe cobbler would take on an apprentice and they wouldn't teach the apprentice how to build the shoe like step by step. They would give them hands-on trial and error and they would say, here's a shoe. Now go make this with this leather. And so they would try and then it would be kind of like this weird thing and they would bring it back to the cobbler and the cobbler would be like, okay, let's look at the actual shoe. And, you know, now this is, you need to do this and that and that. So I thought that was really cool. And I definitely think that we see those models in Star Wars where it's like, Mm -hmm. first of all, you have the master and the apprentice, like you're not seeing the kids in like on Coruscant in the Jedi temple, you don't see them like in sitting in a classroom, like in front of like a desk or something. Like you always, you see them like being engaged in some kind of activity or discussion, which I thought Mm -hmm. was really interesting. But then also just the concept of having the master and the apprentice to where it's a real, again, going back to the relationship, like it's the relationship and the practical, like, lessons that they learn from the hands-on situations right um especially when i think of like yo um not yoda anakin and ahsoka we see that a lot in clone wars where that's how she learns she Mm -hmm. learns in the field of battle like what does it mean for me to follow my master and to like give when do i kind of give him (laughs) 
the credence, you know, right. and when do I sort of make my own decisions and how does that all play out in the end? So, yeah, I just, yeah. I don't know if, if you had any other thoughts on like those, those models of learning. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah. I'm laughing because I, I'm sure there's others, but the, the only like sit at your desk and like in rows uh -huh. and have like a, a lecture kind of classroom experiences in Star Wars that I can think of are in uh, Mandalorian. Where Grogu yeah. wants the cookies, okay, which is funny, because so he's not paying attention anyway. And they, you know, and like, how classic is that? Like, you know, just, oh, I'll just put the kid at the desk. He has no idea what's going on. Um, but then also when Ahsoka uh, gets sent to Mandalore, like mm -hmm. early on, and she's like teaching them. Mm -hmm. And it's like funny, because that's kind of boring, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, it's absolutely like, um, and that, you know, I mean, we don't see... Honestly, I, I feel like the flashback they just did in um, Kenobi mm -hmm. with, you know, Anakin and um, Obi-Wan sparring in the temple. Right. That's like the most. And even that's pretty awesome, of course, like that's the most sort of classroom kind of thing. I mean, everything else with them in the movies is like they're out. Yeah. You know, they're <laughs> going town to town, planet to planet, doing their doing their thing. Um, and of course, you know, you, you gather that Anakin's had that sort of classroom training, which, you know, wouldn't make for good TV or movies anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it reminds me a little bit too of, um, you know, just some of the things you hear about different monasteries and monastic traditions and just sort of, you know, novitiate and just the kinds of things where, you know, you, all the different ways that that can play out of, of learning mm -hmm. these uh, humbling tasks, you know. Right. Um, and precisely when you are tempted to, you know, um, be filled with that, that, that sense of pride, you know, mm -hmm. cause you're dealing with holy things. In mm -hmm. fact, I mean, honestly, I mean, I've heard, and I don't know if you have as well over the years, you know, but I, I've, I've heard some pretty sh shocking things or jokes, even that kind of thing out of the mouths of priests, you know, sometimes. <laughs> and yeah. I think sometimes there, there is that temptation to, it's like, it's okay. You know, like you get the kind of thing, like I can make those jokes. I have a relative that's of that race or, you know, like some people get that kind of mis mistake, I think, where they think that like, well, I can make rude remarks or I can kind of be a certain way because like, it's okay for me. Right. Like I'm an exception to this rule. And Anytime I think we do that, that's dangerous. And then, of course, mm -hmm. like I was saying, you know, when you see that, I think same kind of psychology maybe in people who are in ministry, you know, where they'll they'll kind of play fast and loose with some of those rules or or they'll, you know, not set the best example, uh, you know, uh, because they've they've kind of gotten used to it. You know, they've lost sight of the sacredness of it or the seriousness of, you know, the holy mission, if you want to call it that. And so I think you see that in, in, in Star Wars with the importance of, you know, we need to be, you know, out there, we're, we're on this mission, we're trying to help people, but at the core, it's, it's because we are people of character, you know, like we're, we're called to this, you know, uh, way of life where we should be better or be striving. Mm. Um, I'm kind of rambling, but actually, could I, this might be a good segue. Yeah. Because when you said about like, um, like favorite examples of learning. Yes, please. Um, I, one of the, well, I would argue for me, it's, it's one favorite. Well, they're both favorites, but favorites, because I think one is better than the other and the other okay. one's not as good. And it's, it kind of ties in, I think a little bit to what George was talking about. Are there some mm -hmm. overlap? Um, because I, th I see in some ways, like there's this big debate, you know, um, going on or maybe debates the wrong word but you know there's a, a big uh, explosion like exponential explosion the last like 15 20 years uh really the last 40 but especially the last 15 or so of the um the classical education kind of movement right. and um there's a lot to that it's it's kind of hard to explain but but if i had to summarize it it's you know a lot of classical education from, from like little kids all the way up through you know um higher degrees and stuff like that is is really this attempt to get back to a, in a much more integrated whole person educational experience um and a good example of this is you know you look at like c.s lewis for example and and 
granted, a lot of people will say, well, you know, classical education, you're just trying to go back, you know, or you're trying to retreat. It's like, no, there's more to it than that. Uh, you know, and so Lewis, for example, I think it was like a two year period. I forget how long it was where he was tutored, basically just tutored in Greek, mm. you know, for like two years. Like, so like when he was at school or with his tutor, he's learning Greek. And you're like, well, what about everything else? It's like, well, but the way he was tutored in Greek, he was learning astronomy, literature, history, politics, economics. Like, in this language was this medium through which he's engaging with all of these different ideas and concepts. And he's seeing mm -hmm. how these, how they're all connected. Right. And so there's something I think very Christian, interestingly enough, at the heart of it, and I think why it thrived so much as a predominant kind of educational approach, where it's not uh, versus the more progressive kind of util often utilitarian kind of approach that right. a lot of our more modern education has gone into. In other words, you learn, you know, find a particular interest or skill you have, really learn that well so you can be the little cog in society, and that's like your function. And so with that in mind, I was like, you know what, at its best, I feel like in Star Wars, the, the sort of Jedi training would be more of like a classical model, right? Like you're learning all these mm. things and these different subjects or skills or techniques, but it's always like, it's always flowing from what it means to be a Jedi, mm -hmm. you know? And I kept thinking of like that versus the clone training to me. Because the clone program, I mean, it's like, it's so easy to see it in Star Wars because it's just because of it's just right in your face. It's this machine. Mm -hmm. It's an assembly line. It's like clone, 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 clone. You okay, put them in here. And when, you, when, when you're these many minutes old, you go in this room and you do these things. We hook these things up to your brain and you learn that. And it's their whole existence is utilitarian, right? Like by mm -hmm. definition, like they, they are punched out of these machines one after the other um, with the express goal to become a perfect little soldier who just good soldiers follow orders and you go out and you achieve the mission. And I love it because then jump to like Kenobi when you see that great, you know, Tim Morrison as like the homeless vet. Like they weren't thinking about this. They couldn't have cared yeah. less about this 20 years, what, 15 years ago. You know, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you just completely myopically focus on this function and anything outside that doesn't matter. You know, and I think it's so obvious on the surface of it, what a disservice that does to the person, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so these deeper questions in, re in real life that are very interesting to me of like, you know, who are we? What are we for? You know, mm. I have a little version I have framed over here on my desk of uh, it's kind of based on the four causes, you know, uh, old school philosophy of who are you? What are you made of? Where did you come from and where will you end up? You know, this kind of <laughs> this trajectory of your of your life. And I just think that's really interesting to kind of view, you know, Star Wars and, and learning and education in Star Wars kind of through some of those lenses. So I just, that's, I thought I'd throw those out there. <laughs> that's fascinating that you picked up on that um, contrast because actually when I was reading about what George thought, he, you know, he used those two models as like the ideal. And then he said, mm -hmm. where we've kind of gone to is uh, started with the industrial revolution. And mm -hmm. that was when it was like, you make an assembly line type of learning system. So that exactly what you're saying, so that people can just kind of function in a certain you know scenario of society and they fulfill that role and then that's it whatever <laughs> and yeah. you know it just becomes irrelevant in a few years and and that's it um so if all you're doing is you're just taking in knowledge and then spitting it out and getting a diploma well things change and yeah. you know life changes and society changes and are you going to be able to continue learning you know, so that you can continue to grow with those changes. So, well, and I think, you know, it's a whole other thing and I'm still learning about it myself, you know, <laughs> kind of, but, um, I was just checking his dates. Horace Mann, um, M-A-N-N, -N, uh, was on the uh, Massachusetts board of education in the, and, and if Dom, if you're listening to this, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but there was a movement, you know, uh, as I understand it really, like you, like you said, like George was saying too, you know, this kind of industrial revolution era, you know, like right before the middle of the 1800s, I, th I forget what year, I think it was in the 1830s. He went with a group 
pretty sure it was him, went with a group to tour, you know, like this Prussian military academy. And mm. they were like, this is awesome. <laughs> and they just, they, and, and to be fair, they get there and it's very organized, very orderly, mm. very efficient, right? You know, and just it, because it's a military academy and they just, they, it, it, this idea kind of grew. And a lot of that was some of the seeds of what started to work its way into eventually the, the more progressive kind of model of a very functional utilitarian mm-hmm. kind of education, which, which is not really what it was by and large, you know, before yeah. that. Yeah. And so that's interesting to me that that's, you see that exact specific <laughs> thing, like, you know, the clones specifically being trained for this, yes. you know, this combat. And I'm like, eh, that's not what kids, you know, really, <laughs> or not all of them at least, you know, um, but I do just, it, it's funny. Um, well, I'll tell you what, let me, let me hold off on that. Cause I, there's a, there's a related thing, but I, I want to save it for the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Um, but the idea that we're going back to that, that concept of embracing the uniqueness of the student and what they're interested in learning and the hands-on and that kind of thing. Um, that actually relates to one of my favorite examples of learning in Star Wars, which is in Rebels when Sabine is learning the Darksaber from Kanan. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. So it's pretty funny that, like, you know. <laughs> um, so if anyone hasn't seen it, I will avoid spoilers, but essentially Sabine accepts this task of learning how to wield the Darksaber so that the crew can have some success by gaining the Mandalorian assistance. And so Kanan starts off by teaching her to spar with a training saber. Um, and that doesn't come close to holding the actual dark saber. And he gets frustrated because she clearly doesn't want to follow his instructions. She's trying her own ways of winning the little, you know, practice combat situations that he's setting up. And it's only when Sabine admits her past, admits her reluctances, her fears, um, when Kanan starts to trust her, <laughs> that yeah. she starts to make progress. And so something that Kanan learns, I think, in that process is that he didn't take the time to get to know his student and, of course, also to trust her. And so that was kind of like at the root of his, his failure. And Sabine learns how, libering, how liberating it is to... Um, to know the truth about yourself and to speak right. about your past and to trust yourself and to kind of, she, she starts to see her identity differently. And so, you know, I can, I can come away from that with so many different lessons, but um, when I've been mm-hmm. in a position of like a teacher or a mentor or a leader, um, a lot of times I ultimately didn't want to risk mistakes being made And so Mm -hmm. I didn't give the people that were supposed to learn the space to actually learn the lesson. Um, And I tried to have control over that situation a little too much. But ultimately, learning is not a risk free process, right? Like, right. (laughs) It's it's important to give people that space and also to help the learner to kind of connect with you know, what's being taught. Um, so that was just a couple of things yeah. that, you know, you, I mean, there's so much that you can pull away from, from that particular episode of rebels, but, uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't think know if you have any thoughts on that. I think it, well, and I think it's really hard too, because it's, you know, like I, I get frustrated sometimes. So for example, like, you know, there's so many different things that have, have kind of come together to shape any individual school and kind of you know so like the school i teach at right now you know there's a lot of heart there and there's a lot of um uh goodwill to try to have it be a very you know a very good catholic school but part of the struggle too is there's just a lot of stuff that i I think a lot of people don't even realize is is very much uh directly kind of connected with that more kind of progressive model just because Mm -hmm. of when the school was started not because of the fault of anyone there now and just uh, just a lot of the ways that we do things kind of flow out of that and the only reason i bring that up is because you know it's we 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 are in a situation and just because of our you know our, our current staffing and everything where 
I mean, I've got a bunch of classes that are just packed, yeah. you know, How and do I just, <laughs> yeah. And it's so hard because it's like, I would love to, like, I, you know, it's funny, you know, what's my ideal classroom? It's 12. Mm-hmm. And I don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think Jesus was on to something. <laughs> like it's just, there's something about like 12 to 18 students, mm-hmm. like 15, you know, and for me, anything above that, it just becomes yeah. something different. And you just have to kind of do the best you can. I find a lot of times right. where now it's a crowd and every kid in that crowd is tempted to take less responsibility for the learning because they mm. just think, well, well, if I just sit here and I don't make eye contact, we always tease them. I'm, I'm always like, you know, I can see you, right? Like I can, <laughs> I can see all of you. Like you can, yeah, but they don't feel no. like they're part of the team. No, And they don't. And, and you know, you've got like uh, this kid, like in our setting, like this kid has gone to Catholic school their whole life. They think they know it. The kid next to them just transferred in from public school because there was like, a lot of crime and stuff going on or the kid in front of them transferred in because of like COVID and lockdowns and no schools were open and we were, and they really res that resonated with them and they mm-hmm. wanted to come to us. Mm-hmm. And so there's all these reasons people come yeah, and no two of them are the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, but even like with my own daughters, it's like we were at the pool today and um, like Noel, who's going to be six, she Today was the first day ever she was even expressing interest in jumping into the... She loves to swim, but she jumping in mm. is like, oh, you know. And every time I've ever asked her about it, she's like, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd rather not. I don't really want to do it. And today, she never really did it on her own, but she kept talking about it. And she was jumping in like we were helping her like jump in. But she could totally do it on her own. Absolutely. Like, I, I know 100% she'd be fine and she'd love it. But I can't make her do it because it would really scare her a lot, you know, and I in my judgment, it's like, "Mm." meanwhile, our two year old is trying to jump in like without her vest on even yet. because She's (laughs) crazy. She's just like she's completely like act first and think maybe somewhere else down the road, you know, like they could not possibly be more different. And so even just that, like day in, day out, I'm always struck by like so like I imagine like I'm a Jedi master and you give me like an Ahsoka. Or you mm-hmm. give me an Anakin, mm-hmm. or you give me a Kanan, or you give me, like, mm-hmm. all these people are so different. Yeah. You know, they're make-believe characters, but it's such a beautiful reflection of the reality and the challenge. Like, there is no easy way to do it. It takes, exactly. I think, you know, that commitment, right, and that mm-hmm. willingness, like you said, to, like, okay, where? <laughs> all right, I gotta let you take a little risk here. <laughs> or sometimes, like, listen you don't even appreciate the risk because you take so many of them, you don't, like you're not learning from them. <laughs> like I need you to sometimes recognize that the risks you're taking are endangering others and you need to think about them, you know, and, and that kind of thing too is important. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're talking about, whoa, excuse me, hit my microphone because I'm getting really excited. <laughs> we all do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when, when we're talking about risk, also like being part of the learning process, um, that also relates to my other favorite example <laughs> that mm. I kind of teased at the beginning, which um, is Luke learning from Yoda in The Last Jedi. Mm. And I don't know if that was like one of your examples or if I took it, but um, so, oh, no, no, no. okay, so, so, you know, Luke is on this island. He just witnessed Ray and Kylo making their force connection. He tries to stop Ray from continuing down the path that she's going on. It's dangerous. And so he even like tells the story about his own failure towards Ben Skywalker. But then ultimately she asks him to take part in the solution. And Luke chooses to stay where he is. Now, I know a lot of Mm. people don't like The Last Jedi because they don't think that's what Luke would have done. Mm. But I kind of... I I really really be, I I buy into it <laughs> because okay, yeah. I've seen how people can can get to that point of of inaction like depressed inaction yeah and and I think that that's definitely possible for somebody who in their youth was very go get them and let's go and and when you encounter those failures of the people that you look up to then it's very, it can be very disillusioning. So, mm-hmm. so when force Never goes, your heroes. yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't There's that, that hero yeah. thing again. 
but but speaking of heroes, so Force Ghost Yoda, you know, appears and and Luke doesn't know at that point, like, how do I come to terms with the past of the Jedi Order? What what do I do in the future? Like he's just at the standstill and frustration. And so I think in this moment, Yoda does what what Luke wasn't willing to do, which is he takes action. Hmm. And and Yoda Again, very controversial, but he burns the tree that Luke believes is containing all of the ancient Jedi texts. And so I think in this scene, Yoda is showing Luke that his greatest flaw is his temptation to focus on the past or the future and not to be mindful of the present. Mm. And Luke, when you look back on the saga, like Luke is most powerful in the entire saga when he's able to tap into the force and really be present in the moment. But he's most dangerous when he is like focused on what could happen in the future or what happened in the past. He's like lost or just dangerous um, Mm. in those situations. So I think it's very consistent with his character. And and Yoda's lesson is pass on what you have learned strength mastery yes but weakness folly failure also yes failure most of all the greatest teacher failure is Mm. so to me the lesson is that in order to be a good teacher we must not only be willing to help our students come to terms with like oh what are you doing wrong (laughs) but also what are we passing on from our failures, like, and are we coming to terms with our own weaknesses and failures? And that just humility, I think is like Mm. this constant theme that you and I've been discussing through this whole conversation. Well, and trying to take a a bigger picture in terms of, and this, this isn't a a negation of what you, what you just said, you know, but, but so for example, like being overly focused, not, not so much on the present, Mm -hmm. because I think that's what I'm trying to get to here, but but one aspect of the present that you're again, I keep using the word over inflating, but like, you know, you're, you're, you know, so if you have a student who is too fixated on, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't mm-hmm. do this right around like, ah, you know, True. and you take them to, you step them back and say like, look, hold on a minute. Like, look, look at this, you know, like mm-hmm. take a breath. Like you said earlier with the cobbler, I love that example. It's like, you go and like, ah, and you have to, <laughs> you know, step back. No, oh, teaching someone to ride a bike or anything, you know, I think you, it's always that tension of like, mm. you know, kind of push, 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 focus. Like this is the drill and then step back, big picture, you know, big picture. Yeah. Um, because that's part of the present too, you know, practicing right. the present moment. In fact, the, the, a funny example of this, uh, I'd like to share if that's okay. We had, uh, the, the first school I taught at first high school I taught at, we had, um, I don't know how it worked out but we ended up with with a it was a very small high school it was a little prep academy only had like 140 150 students total and there was like a i called them like this there was like this pack of guys from north korea who had all come over right around the same time there's like six of them and it was just dispar- it was disproportionate in terms of the percentage just in terms of like having that many you know exchange students in this like little school like and we had others too but like these these guys were like this little clique it was so funny and they'd bump into me like i saw them at the grocery store you know like mr creepy i'm like okay like you guys are everywhere and so um one of them who i really you know connected with um junho uh great kid uh super smart and he did a project or something for me and he got like a, like I'm, I'm grading in my classroom. It's a beautiful day. Uh, it's like April, May or you know, somewhere in there in the spring. And um, he got like a 95 on this project. Okay. And like, I'm eating a sandwich and I'm putting grades in and stuff and I enter his grade and like just absolutely, pr- I could have predicted it, you know, 90 seconds later, my classroom door flies open <laughs> and it's, it's June. And he like, <laughs> Like runs in my classroom. He's like, Mr. Creevy, why'd you give me a bad grade? <laughs> and I have no idea. This is totally, I swear it came from God. Cause this is nothing I would have planned. I'm just sitting there and I have this ham sandwich and I'm like chewing and I just look at him with this kind of grin. And I'm, I finished my, my, you know, swallow my bite of sandwich. I put the rest of it down. I said, June, do you have a kite? He goes, what? <laughs> I said, do you have a, do you have a kite? You know, like a kite, like you fly it up. He's like, no, I know what a kite is. I said, no, I don't have a kite. I said, 
come here for a second. And he walks over to my desk and I look out. I'm on the first floor and it's this beautiful spring day with huge windows. And I put my arm, like this should have been on like a TV show. I put my <laughs> arm around this kid's shoulder and I'm looking out the window with him. I was like, look at how beautiful this day is, man. Mm-hmm. Did you see that sky? Mm-hmm. When's the last time you saw clouds like that? And he's just kind of looking at me like smiling, shaking his head like, what is going on? <laughs> like, Here's, I said, I have a homework assignment for you. Not for anybody else, just for you. I said, it's going to sound a little strange. I was like, I want you to leave today. Go buy a kite. I said, like, I don't know where, you know, like go to Toys R Us. That was still a thing. I was like, mm-hmm. I was like Target, something. I was like, go buy a kite, go to a park. And you fly that sucker for like 45 minutes or an hour, you know, Mm -hmm. like just get out there and like, but I, and he was just so taken aback. And, uh, you know, it was just such a funny experience of like, I remember that so fondly of this moment where, where it's like 95, like, look, I mean, if I were in your shoes, I'd want the hundred too. But at some point, you know, there's more to life than you running in like you know and my main concern was he's clearly sitting there like he's got notifications waiting, on. he's, he's yeah. so like waiting for that grade it's like kid like do something else man you know like just go. <laughs> <laughs> and i wondered like i this might sound silly but i do wonder sometimes like when did obi-wan and anakin you know just mm. like go on a walk you know and right and, and the thing is i haven't i mean there's so much material that we've all seen and like those like in-between scenes in the animated series but i like really like you know connect i don't know what the star wars version of golf is but like if they could have just gone golfing you know or Mm. (laughs) something yeah in the middle of the war they probably didn't have those opportunities and it's it's even i feel like it's even more important than like you know with prayer right you know we're always right you know if you're if you're too busy to pray you're too busy you know it's Mm -hmm. a story of jose maria escriva i think where some of his his close co-workers were really getting stressed out and, and they were they said something like you know father we don't even have time to pray and he apparently just completely burst into tears and like ran out of the room like just a uh, completely had this emotional breakdown and, mm. and they're talking to him later and he's like if if you don't pray it, it won't work mm-hmm. you know like he was just he was such a real deal with that like you know it doesn't matter what you're going through i mean he had been through the spanish civil war you know mm-hmm. like it was difficult to kind of you know, get his sympathy about like, it's so hard to pray father, you know, and, and I'm yeah. reading about things like this and just thinking like, Oh my, you know, <laughs> but oh, yeah. I forget why I brought all that up, but no, oh, big picture. But just the, the, the present, you know, being, being yeah. present, being, um, able to, and it's, I, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's harder for me probably than it is for many people. I'm sure it's harder for others than it is for me, but like, I, I definitely am not one that's like easily, in the zone and focused and present mm. and like i mean that's one of my biggest struggles mm-hmm. so I, I do get that big time yeah with luke yeah yeah that's definitely a lesson that i'm learning as well um yeah. the older i get the yeah um well we've talked about a lot of things um do you have any other examples that you wanted to share from star wars uh, I, I wrote a bunch down, but we talked about a lot of them. <laughs> it was, you know like just i could just list like you know the bad batch and omega as a group or mm-hmm. like Hunter and Omega versus, was it Cut? I forget, is it Loquane or something? You know, the, the clone um, that has a family, right. you know, that they catch up with and how he has that moment, like Hunter's like chewing Omega out and he's just like, hold on. <laughs> he's like, how are you doing, sweetie? Are you okay? <laughs> and like, just like, oh, okay. Yeah, he's gotta... teaching through example there. Right. Yeah. And he doesn't chew out Hunter. And that's what I like too, is he's like, mm-hmm. buddy, I get it. Because you, you, <laughs> you don't know kids. Trust me, you know, you'll get it, you know. Yeah. And so, the, you know, and then, of course, bad examples like the emperor, you know, and the idea of a teacher who's completely manipulating someone the mm. whole time just to get yeah. something out of them. You know, that happens, too. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the, or the ultimate of that utility. I mean, Vader is like the par excellence of like mm-hmm. what the whole cloning program was in a, you know, macro kind of situation. Yeah. You know, yeah he's a tool that's awesome (laughs) that's awesome the it's just i think you could probably like do a whole nother episode on just like learning in star wars because there's just it's again it's so central to the saga and i really didn't even realize it until we were getting ready for this episode so um, well and that's and like you said earlier like before we started recording you asked me about you know if i had seen about George Lucas and education and, and, and I hadn't, but like, and I'd said to you, you know, like, I think most of us know his background of, 
actually he talks about this a lot in his interview that he did a couple years ago with um uh james cameron and um but talks about his you know coming up from you know film yeah like you know he loved film but like you know his sort of educational background was very rooted in um anthropology and sociology and just this you know kind of big picture of like how do human societies form and how do right. they what are the stories that they gather around and all that but i think obviously a big part of that is education because how do mm-hmm. you pass that narrative on um and how do you connect with that deeper narrative and that's the other big note i just had i'll just mention in passing is just um i think all of those learning experiences we've been talking about it's like they all flow from a you know a deeper narrative that right. people are basing everything on you know and then they also feed that you know so it's it's interesting because anakin you know he's the way that i think the emperor seems to tap into that kind of mentoring role with him is by triggering that and kind of tickling and just sort of that playing around with that that deeper narrative of the jedi code which he couldn't Mm -hmm. care less about but how he masterfully twists that to the point where anakin thinks he's he's really following the jedi code and the other guys aren't, you know, it, it's just brilliant, you know, and, and the role that obviously like, in, like propaganda and all like that kind of stuff can play that that could be a whole other should oh, be. Yeah. We should do a whole like propaganda in Star Wars. Oh, that'd be fun. That's <laughs> a good so, idea. They, they, that's such a well done element of it, too. You know, that's, yeah. that's connected. But, yeah, yeah. And those are some more thoughts. <laughs> right. And as you were talking, I was even thinking about, you know, as far as storytelling being an educational tool as well. I mean, obviously, being Christians you know, Jesus telling so many stories as Mm. the way that he taught and also through example, obviously. Um, But then too, like when you look at Star Wars, uh, the whole Clone Wars series like would start at the very beginning with some kind of proverb and then it would go into telling the story that That then backed up the proverb. (laughs) Yeah. So it's like, this is the lesson. Now we're going to teach you (laughs) through the story. So that, that's really cool. Um, Well, I mean, we could go on and on, but we'd like to hear from all of you listening as well um, what you are thinking about as you're listening to the discussion. um, We want you to be engaged and involved in this discussion as well. So please feel free to email us, starwars at sqpn.com. You can also leave a comment on the Facebook page for StarQuest at facebook.com slash starquestmedia, or you can tweet at sqpn. And please um, let us know what your thoughts are. Also do share this podcast and um, on social media. We, we love to see that as well so that we can continue to uh, engage more people. Um, and we'd also like to thank some very special people who made this episode possible. Our patrons, including Ricky S, Layla L, Marie and Daniel M, Christopher N and Victor P. This is Dom Bettinelli, CEO of StarQuest. I need to ask for your help, but first I want to thank you for listening to StarQuest and supporting our mission of exploring the intersection of faith and pop culture. We've added nine new shows since 2019, including most recently, The Secrets of Middle Earth, just in time for the new Amazon streaming series. And we have plans to add even more, but the network needs additional resources. We need to bring on more audio editors, video editors, and production equipment, including video equipment for Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World and new shows we have in the planning stages. If you value this show and the other great shows on StarQuest, we need to hear from you now. If you're not yet one of our monthly patrons, please become one. And if you're already a patron, please consider increasing your monthly donation. There are many special patron benefits we'd like to give you, and you can learn more about them by going to sqpn.com give and clicking become a patron. Your support at this time is crucial, so please go to sqpn.com give Today, that's sqpn.com slash give. Now, before we tease the next episode, um, do uh, please leave a review for the podcast if you haven't. Uh, Give us a good rating, please, because that also helps us to get Secrets of Star Wars seen by more people who'd be interested in listening. Um, And as well, a quick reminder that you can... um, teach others that this podcast actually exists by getting some merch. So brand new notebook, maybe for school, Mm -hmm. Uh, shirt, hoodie, phone cover. There are a number of options, but uh, they all represent. Yes. Oh, yes. (laughs) That would be so cool. 
Um, but they all represent secrets of Star Wars with a design encapsulating our philosophy of finding hope in a galaxy far, far away. So you can get that at sqpn.com slash merch. All right. So next up, our very own old Ben will be hosting an episode uh, diving into the heroes of Star Wars and what makes a hero. Anything you want to say to tease that, Mike? Well, I, it, um, I have on my note sheet here, I had the top half of the page was for this episode. So I had the title and then in parentheses, Angela, because I write down who the host is. Mm -hmm. But it looks kind of self-serving because it says episode 129, what makes a hero? And then in parentheses, it says me. <laughs> Meaning I'm hosting it, but I was like, oh, that. <laughs> I make a really... hero. <laughs> it's... I do. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's exciting. We're just going to, um, it's, so we're set to record it um, at this time um, on uh, September 11th because we record on Sundays. And I was just, we were thinking because they threw us off with the whole Andor thing. So we were like all <laughs> set to like do this build up to Andor. And then they're like, and wait till next month when it comes out. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> So uh, we, we, you know, we get just to have practically, extra fun. <laughs> well, practically speaking, we were kind of like, OK, well, let's and we have so many, you know, everybody in the panel has shared so many ideas. And yeah. I think that was one that father put down a while ago, actually. So I was looking at it and I was like, that might be a nice one to kind of address on, you know, sort of 9-11 just because of that. But, mm. but then to dig deeper into like, what really is a hero in Star Wars and, and hero yeah. in real life? How do we what do we mean by that word? So that's. That'll be really interesting in the context of, of Andor because yeah. I don't really see Cassie and Andor as a hero. I kind of see right. him as an anti-hero. So. I think it's neat to have that, think about that ahead of time and then be like, oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Well, I'm looking yep. forward to that. Yeah. Um, well, until then, until next time, I see you, Mike Creeby. Thank you for joining me in Secrets of Star oh, Wars. It's, it's so much fun. Thank you. <laughs> and once again, I'm the one in the middle. I'm Angela Cialana. Thanks for listening to Secrets of Star Wars on StarQuest. StarQuest wants to hear from you. We're conducting a survey of our audience. That's you, to help us in our planning for the future. Please take a moment and visit sqpn.com survey. We'll be selecting two participants to receive an Amazon gift card as an expression of our thanks. So visit sqpn.com survey today.